Today we're going to work on a solo ukulele arrangement on some themes from Europa by Carlos Santana. This was voted on over at my Patreon page where every single month I do a different lesson based on votes of the patrons. So if you'd like to help decide on next month's tutorial as well as download the tab for this one, be sure to check it out linked down below. Let's go ahead and dive in though to the start of the song. The first stanza looks something like this and sounds something like this. Now to play this, we're going to start with this sort of pickup bar. To do this, just take your middle finger, place it on the second fret of the C string. We're gonna pluck that. Then take your ring and place it on the third fret of the E. Go ahead and leave your middle where it is though. Then play open on the A, leaving the fingers where they are and now add the index on one of the A. See that that kind of builds a G minor chord, which will come into play later. So then we take the one off for open on the A, play the three on the E and the two on the C. Kind of just building that G minor chord. It's almost a little bit of an arpeggio to start. Then we go into measure two. We're going to play three on the C string. To do this, you very simply can just move that middle finger up one fret and pluck it. And then we're going to finish this measure with three down strums on a C minor seven chord. Now C minor seven sounds scary, but all that we're gonna do is take our index finger and bar it all the way across all four strings. And for these strums, you'll notice their strum marker is written, but I actually like to use the pad of my thumb for these. And you'll notice that I'm doing it much softer because this is supposed to be sort of the harmony that's in the background. It's almost like a duet for just one player, right? And so by doing these soft strums in the back, it's a really nice texture. And then as we go into measure three, we go to an F7. This chord's a little bit more tricky, but there's a trick to playing it. Just play a normal everyday F chord, middle finger on the second fret of the G string, index here on the first fret of the E string. And then add your ring finger to the third fret of the C string and your pinky finger here to the third fret of the A string. And we're gonna strum that chord once. Again, I like to use my thumb. If you wanna use your index finger, totally fine, as long as you're doing a nice strum. And then the melody picks back up by playing one on the E, which is already there, and then three on the E. Now what you can actually do for this is you could just take your pinky and move it up one to three on the E, and then play open on the A which is already there because the pinky moved up. Three on the E with the pinky. Take the pinky back off for one on the E, and then we're going to play open on the C, which we just take our ring finger off. Kind of neat, right, how it just builds off of that. Going into the next thing here, it's this B flat major seven. We're gonna take our middle finger, move it down to the second fret of the C string, leave our index finger where it was on the first fret of the E, and add the ring finger here on the third fret of the G string. And we're gonna strum this four times. So here's what this whole first stanza sounds like. Should be something like this. One. Going into the next stanza. So now to play this, we're going to start with this E flat major seven chord. To do it, just play that C minor seven we played earlier, which is just barring all the way across with your index finger. And then add your ring finger to the fifth fret of the A string. So it's three, 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 five. If you're struggling getting a good sound with this bar, it's okay to take your middle finger and actually reinforce it. Another trick is if you're trying to fret right in the middle, it can be harder to push. So get right up next to that fret wire. Don't go over it bit right up next to it and it can make it a lot easier to press. So we do our strum on that chord. Then we play three on the C, which is already there. I'm then going to play five on the C with the ring finger. Three on the E, which is already there. Five on the C, which is my ring finger still. Three on the C, take the ring finger off, leaving the bar where it is. And then I need to play two on the C. I can just slide that index finger down one fret to two. Going into measure six here, I'm gonna play open on the C string. Then I'm gonna strum this kind of A minor seven flat five, which is going to be middle finger here on the second fret of the G string and ring finger here on the third fret of the E string. I'm gonna strum this three times. 
and then I'm going to go to a sort of D7. All I do is leave the index finger where it is, move the ring finger off to allow the middle finger to come on the second fret of the E string, strum that through. And then I'm going to play open on the C, two on the C, three on the C, two on the C, open on the C, just using my index and middle finger there as I go through. Then we're going to go to G minor, so middle finger here on the second fret of the C string, play that by itself, and then play the G minor chord, adding the ring finger on the third fret of the E string, and the index finger here to the first fret of the A string. Give that three strums, and then one more strum for the beginning of measure nine. And then from here, it goes back to the riff that we played at the very beginning of the song in measure one. So you remember when I said the G minor chord was going to come in handy later when we first learned that? It's because it's playing that G minor at the end of 8 into 9. Just playing that same riff. So here's what measures 5, 6, 7, and 8 and 9 should sound like together. Now what's cool about this is you'll notice there's a repeat marker here and a first ending marker. So what this means is when we play through measure nine, we actually repeat and we go back to the beginning of the song, but not the very beginning. We go back to where the repeat markers are on measure two. And then we play through measures two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight again. But instead of going back to measure nine, which was that first ending, we're going to go on to measure 10, which is the second ending. Just so that you can hear it though, I'm going to start at the beginning of the song. I'm going to play measures 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do the repeat, going back to measure 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And then I'll stop there and we'll start talking about the next melody section. So it should sound something like this. Now from here it goes on to melody B, but before we jump to that, you might notice some of the rhythm of some of the melody notes I was playing there was a little bit different than what's listed on the tab. First reason is my screen was about to fall asleep, so I had to wake it up. The other reason is because it sounds really good to actually have rhythmic variations with this. So when you're learning it, you can follow the rhythmic notation, which is very simple on the tab. It's all just eighth notes and quarter notes. But then as you're playing it through, it's okay to feel it a bit. For instance, the first melody goes like this, right? What if I want to play it instead like this? That was a very different rhythm, but it sounds really nice. So as you get comfortable with the melody and comfortable with this song, you're allowed to kind of change it a little bit. And if your screen falls asleep as you're working on it, it's okay to rush through a line a little bit to make sure you get it woken up. But let's go on to melody B now, the second part of the song. It's actually a little bit simpler, but I really love how this sounds on the ukulele. So it sounds like this, measures 10, 11, 12, and 13, should be something like. So it's using the same chord progression, but in a very different way. It's adding some interesting texture to it to make it sound more full. So we're gonna start with something very familiar, the G minor chord, strum through. Then we're gonna pluck the C, the E, and then we're gonna pluck the A string, but we need to stretch the fifth fret there on the A. So I like to use my pinky here and play that. Going into the 11th measure, I like to just leave my pinky where it is and slide my index up to bar across the third fret. So it's three, 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 five, which is the same as the E flat major seven chord we played earlier in the song. This time we're calling it a C minor nine. 
Now, if it's too tight of a squeeze with the pinky, it's okay to use your ring finger there too. Whatever works. But what you'll notice is there's this little squiggly line on 3335 on the chord that's listed here. I like to take my thumb and strum through it slowly using a little bit more of the nail of the thumb. If you don't have a nail there, that's totally fine. Just kind of pretend you do and catch it a little bit harder with the tip of the finger. And then the next three strums are going to be soft with the thumb. And it just creates this really nice dual sound. Going to the 12th measure, F6, really straightforward. We just take that bar, we slide it up to the fifth fret, taking the other fingers off, and we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna strum through with the thumb, and then strum the thumb softly three times. This next chord here, the B flat add nine, it's really tricky. It's not very complicated, but it's pretty tricky. You're gonna play a normal B flat major seven, which we played earlier in the song, three, two, one, zero. You're gonna take your pinky and add it to the third fret of the A string. So you have three, two, one, three. It can just be tough to get all those fingers in there on time. But man, isn't that a cool sound? And that concludes the stanza, which again, sounds something like this when you put it together. Going into the next stanza. So to play this, we're going to start with this E flat six chord. Again, it's an alternate name for a chord that we've already played. It's the same as the C minor seven towards the beginning. Just bar all the way across the third fret. We're gonna strum through with our thumb and then strum softly with our thumb three times. Now we're going to play a pretty tricky chord, the A minor seven flat five. In this case, what we're going to do is a double bar. So this index finger right here, it's gonna slide down to the second fret. And the real hard parts, you're going to take your middle finger and you're going to bar it across the third fret of the C, E, and the A strings. So what you have to do is you have to make sure that that middle finger is barred across and then the index here, which is still bar, hence the term double bar, it doesn't need to be pressing across all four strings. It only needs that G string to be fretted here on the second fret. This is a tough chord. Take some yoga for your fingers. If you find that you're getting this sound, what can help is when you're pushing like this, take your wrist and kind of pull it back a little bit. And oftentimes that can pinch on those strings. So one definitely takes some practice. So we're gonna strum through there with the thumb, four strums with the thumb or one strum through with the thumb, three soft strums with the thumb, four total. And then we're gonna go to the 16th measure here. It's a D7, our normal everyday D7, index finger barred across the second fret and the middle finger here on the third fret of the A string. Strum through and then three nice strums. And then on measure 17, things get a little bit different. We're gonna start with our G minor, which we've played a few times so far. We're gonna strum through this with our thumb. And then we're going to keep doing that sort of thumb sweeping strum as we go, but we're going to take the index finger off on the second one, place it back on, and then place the third fret here on the A string with the pinky finger. So the 17th measure is sort of this. And so that you can hear it, here's measures 14, 15, 16, and 17. Should be this. As we go into the next stanza here, this should look very familiar. You'll notice it says melody A and it says measure 18, but it's almost exactly the same to what we've played before. It starts just a little bit different in that we're going to strum through our G chord, G minor chord again with our thumb. But then right after this right here, it goes right back essentially to measure one. And this whole stanza is exactly the same as measures one, two, three, and four were, except this one starts with that sweep strum with the thumb going through the G minor. That's all that there really is different, which is kind of neat. So here's what 18, 19, 20, 21 sound like.
And then the next... It's going to actually end the song. And how we play this, it starts very similarly to what we did on 5, 6, 7, and 8, but it changes a little bit towards the end. Measure 22 here with the E flat major 7, 3, 3, 3, 5. This is exactly the same as measure 5 was. We're going to play the 3, the 5, 3, 5, 3, 2, exactly the same. And then we go on to measure 23, open on the C, followed by the strums with the A minor 7, flat 5. Same thing we did on measure 6. And then we go on to measure 24, and this is where it's different. Measure 24 is different than 7, even though they both start with the same D7 chord. This time, we're going to play 3 on the A, 5 on the A. And what I like to do here is, because I'm coming here with these two fingers on the D7, I like to just use my ring finger here, 3, 5, with the pinky, slide up to 6 with the pinky, ring finger here on 5, and then I like to use the ring finger to come up to 9. So that fretting looks something like this. So it's just using the pinky and ring finger. Honestly, it doesn't matter too much how you fret this as long as you get a good consistent tone. It's okay to use one finger the whole way if you want. It can allow you to do more slides, whatever else. If you want to use multiple fingers and do something like, that's totally fine too, whatever's comfortable. But then after that, we play the last song, or last chord of the song, here on measure 25, which is the G minor chord. To play this, open on the G, take your index, bar it across 10 of the C, E, and A, and strum all the way through. One of my favorite chords on the ukulele. Just love how this sounds. And we just let that ring out to finish this song. And so this last stanza should sound something like this. and it ends that beautiful jam. Now what's so cool about this tune is it's just a big jam. And if you just strum these chords, you can play this and solo over it, use this melody, do all sorts of different things. In fact, on my Patreon page, I have a jam track that you can play this along with and it sounds really good, sounds really fun, using some different instruments and stuff. So be sure to check that out if you haven't below. Now, as always, if you have any questions with this, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. Again, every month I do a different lesson based on votes from my patrons over at patreon.com. So check that out if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time for the next tutorial here on this YouTube channel. Thanks so much. Have a good one.